said in scripture, it, it goes through, down to the train. It, it's not, it's, 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 yes, it sustains life, but the food that he wants to give us will give us life eternal. And again, God created us to know, love, and serve him so that we can be happy with him in heaven, and he's going to give us everything we need to get there. And one of the most generous gifts he gave us was that of the Eucharist. You know, with the Holy Thursday, with our, with our Lenten season upon us, we have to remember that beautiful gift on Holy Thursday. Because he knew, he knew that we were a fallen humanity. He knew that we were imperfect. So he had to give us something to help us. And, and my favorite analogy is, is the sacraments. Think about our, our journey to him as a deep, daunting precipice, a very, very steep mountain. Because he didn't say the path was easy, right? He said we have to take the narrow path. My, my, my yoke is easy, but my cross is heavy, right? I mean, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. But um, he said we're not going to love this life because we're looking forward to the next. And so on Holy Thursday, he gave us the sacraments. He gave us the sacrament of the Eucharist. That was the first mass. Because he knew that when he left, we still needed him. And how generous and wonderful of a God do we have that would go so far as to give himself to us in the Eucharist forever. Any time we want to go to Mass, we can receive him in the Eucharist. We will have our Lord present in us for at least 33 minutes. It's amazing. He didn't have to do that. But he gave us the sacraments as that satiating water that helps us <laughs> as we climb the rock, that, that, that tall mountain, as we fall. The water replenishes us. It's hot. It's scary. It's steep. There are things we don't like about it. And God gives us that replenishing Eucharist, or any of the other sacraments for that matter. But he didn't have to do that. But he, he created us again to know, love, and serve him so that we can be happy with him in heaven. So as we climb the mountain, he gives us what we need to get there. And so how can we believe that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist? Because of the miracles. 140 proven miracles that the Vatican has said, yep, it's real, it's true. We can go to Europe and we can see it, which is just absolutely amazing. <coughs> and how's the MS word in my Android and the children's iPhones know that he's present in the Eucharist? I guess if you guys try it when you get home or even when you're when we're done here today, look on your phone and see every time you take Eucharist it all affects it with a capital E. And then again my last question, if all these people believe that Jesus is present, how is it that so many don't and again, so I ask you and I entreat you just to pray for the gift of faith. It is a gift. And as St. Padre Pio would say at consecration throughout Mass, and he was so impassioned when he said it, he would point to the tabernacle, and he would say, Jesus is here. A great saint, he would say it with such passion that people would weep, Jesus is here. here. Um, when you go there, if any of you, uh, well, you don't have to say, if you've ever gone to adoration, yeah, if anybody have holy hours or have you gone? I didn't know what I was going to do when I got there, and I, quite honestly, um, I was nervous. And there are so many different things you can do. Sometimes it's just nice to go to someplace where it's not loud. I don't know if you have small children. <laughs> it's not loud there. And so it's peaceful. So if for nothing more, start going just to find peace, knowing that he's there or, or hoping that he's there, praying for the gift of faith. If you can go there <clears throat> for 10 minutes, you don't have to send it for four hours. <coughs> he's there waiting. And, and even if it's not the time when you guys have adoration, he's in the tabernacle waiting. He knows his soul. He said to St. Peter in the Garden of Gethsemane, could you not wait with me one hour? He just wants to spend any time that you have to give him. <coughs> And I remember my husband and I were so busy when our kids were young, and we're still busy. But I asked God to make time in my schedule. I asked him. Because right, why did he create me? To know, love, and serve him so I can be happy with him in heaven. And he did. He absolutely cleared a spot on my schedule where I could, I could go. And then on top of that, he was showing off so much. I, um, as I said, I've been a chapel hopper. I just said, well, Lord, it would be so much nicer if we had that at our parish. And that was a long shot. And within six months, somebody moved to our parish who had started an adoration chapel. And she brought it to our parish. And so I told my husband, like, he spoils us, you know? <laughs> He's just so good. But honestly, if you ask for it with your heart, I promise you he will show up and give you what your heart needs to draw into him. Because he's drawn to you all the time. My, my spiritual director once said he's relentlessly pursuing you all the time. Isn't that a beautiful image? And so he just says, come in and say hi. Talk to
come to me, or don't. Read a book with me, play the rosary, whatever. I, I have one friend who comes in and she just talks the entire time, but she's, she's talking with Jesus in the room. I mean, who better to be talking with, you know? And so there's nothing wrong to do in the Eucharistic Adoration Chapel. Just spending time with him. Again, even if it's five minutes, I promise you want to go back. I promise. And one thing that my priest said that I liked a lot is um, there's this, the scripture passage where um, Samuel says, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You could just be quiet and listen to the Lord speaking your heart. One of my girlfriends had gone into adoration and she was <clears throat> prayerfully discerning growing her family. And she and her husband were both on the fence. And um, on the altar right before where the, where the monster sits, she, the word son called out to her. And she had such a, a sense of peace with it. And she, she said she went home and she told her husband and she just said, I really believe the Lord is asking us to open our hearts. And in the meantime, the Lord has opened his heart to my children. And so God is present and he, is, he will speak to you you can, you can be silent, you can read a book, you can pray the chaplet, pray the rosary. There's nothing that you can do that's wrong there because you're doing it in the presence of our Lord. He just wants to spend time with you. And you guys have adoration um, here at um, Charity Chapel. It starts Sundays at 6 p.m. through Friday at 1 p.m. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to Christy. At, and the email address is down there, too. And I just encourage you guys, um, please stop by and say hi. He's there, and he wants to talk to you. He wants to listen to you, and he wants to give you all the grace that you need to get to heaven. So, thank you.